Welcome, Castle Rock. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I've seen the first four episodes. I really like the show. Thank you for Thank watching you. them. Um, it scared me, and I don't scare easily. So thank you for that. That's Go good. On. Who here are big Stephen King fans? Everybody, you kind of have so to say that. It's fine. What, this yeah. was scariest Stephen King book or adaptation? I think it's Pit Cemetery. <laughs> it's Pit Cemetery. I feel like I missed a joke here with uh, the pronunciation. In the panel, of they were asking everyone's favorite books, and I said Pit Cemetery. <laughs> it is really <laughs> funny. Pit <Pet> Cemetery. <laughs> Oh, I'm so you kind of have to be there. They all think it's hilarious. <laughs> Nobody We're just not, it's just not accent. Accent. I don't know. It's just my accent. Yeah. yeah. What for, me, I, for me, it's The Shining because um, I've just become a parent. And <laughs> basically, that is the story of a man who terrorizes his family um, because he's trying to write a novel. And, 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 and I think that's something I can relate to. What? <laughs> that would be quiet? Yeah. Sissy, you started in the first Stephen King adaptation. Does it feel sort of com like you're coming full circle now? It does. It does. I'm really thrilled to be a part of this. What was your first reaction when you were approached about this and when you read the script? Well, when I read the script, I thought, why in the hell did they give it to me on red paper? <laughs> <laughs> it took me a long time to read it on red paper. Yeah. But after I got through that, I, you know, then I, I met with them and I, um, uh, Dusty and Sam, and I... It was because of them and the cast, and of course, Stephen King and J.J. Abrams. It was just a great project. And it was scary because we really didn't have that much information except what they told us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, a, it was a leap of faith. It was a little scary. I mean, that's as scary as the show is. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, I'm glad I'm here now. For the producers, what are some of the challenges of, like, honoring Stephen King's work, but also making this a distinct world on its own. Yeah, I mean we wanted to tell an original story that sort of felt like it was a, a song written in the key of Stephen King and as fans, you know, we, we sort of grown up on Stephen King. I think the hardest thing in a way was restraint when it came to the enormous library. You're talking about, mm. you know, almost 60 books and all these iconic characters and, and um, some of the books are a thousand pages long and so there's so much to draw from and I think one of the big challenges was trying to figure out what to leave on the table for future seasons and what really fit with the story. You know, what what really felt organic to the kind of weird, original Stephen King story that we were trying to tell this season. And how involved is Stephen King? He's a godfather. He's kind of like Charlie from Charlie's Angels. He, uh, you know, he's, um, he is uh, ensconced in his own work as Everybody knows he's um, about the most prolific writer we have. Um, but we would send him all the scripts and check in with him when we were going to make um, big, kind of consequential choices about characters he invented. And um, he was really supportive. Did he give notes? I, he, he didn't really give any notes. I will tell you, the terrifying moment was when we sent him the first episode. Oh, God, oh. it must have been. Because you don't want Stephen King to hate the Stephen King yeah. show that you've written. The show could be dead in the water pretty fast. Um, and? We had approached him with the idea of coming back to Castle Rock after a long time, and I think that you know, in, in Needful Things, which was the last novel that he wrote, it was it's actually literally subtitled the last Castle Rock story, and so I think there was a, a, a trepidation that we had about well, what 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 do we have left to say? And I think part of what seemed exciting to us, and I, I hope to him, um, was the idea of sort of bringing Castle Rock into 2018 and looking at what this place that had been, you know, terrorized by a rabid dog and a serial killer and a, and the devil himself sort of looked like now. I would definitely say that, like, the most important rev review that we got was the email that JJ forwarded us from Steve after he'd watched the first episode saying that um, he actually had a moment where he was yelling at his TV, like, don't go down that hole! <laughs> nice. That's, uh, he, he's sort of the godfather of don't go down that hole, so. And this is an <laughs> anthology series, correct? Does, does that mean season two is completely different cast, different story? Yeah, I mean, the idea is just to, to treat it like Stephen does his novels and, and to potentially come back and return to characters in surprising ways, but, but for each season to be a self-contained kind of 10-hour story. So what does that mean for these four lovely folks here for season two? Well, these guys can come back anytime they're available. The problem is none of them is ever available. Yeah. But as soon as they are, we'd love to have them back. Was that one of the appeals for the, of the show for the four of you, is that you could come in and do one season of a show versus ten seasons of the show? Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. I feel like, uh, like TV is hard to commit to because you could be on it forever. 
but uh, once it's like a, a limited ten episodes, I think like that's like the for me it's like such a good like it's complementing film so 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 much because you mm -hmm. get to like really delve in for like ten hours of material uh, and to get to know the characters. So I feel feel like that time frame is like eight to ten hours is like, like great. I feel it's hard to make a, a good season two of television. I feel like I... It is hard. Yeah, good luck, guys. <laughs> no, I mean with the same, with the same story, with the same exact story. No, it's However, not true. All that being yeah. said, I really like these people and I think if we got stuck with each other, it would be okay. Yeah, yeah no, it would be. But you do That's never true. know what the experience is going to be. So there is something comforting about just one season. Mm -hmm. like, well, especially it's when it's mysterious. Worst. Like, I'm really happy that because mm -hmm. our our story has a conclusion. Is the ending satisfying? Will we be satisfied? So satisfied. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're done shooting. You're, yeah. you're okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We hope that that it's going to satisfy people, and we we certainly hope that you know there's a J JJ kind of invented the mystery box in a way, mm -hmm. and um, and obviously like the pressure for answers in a story like that. And I think part of it is what what kind of what you're saying, Bill, which is like there's a real um, gift to in a way be able to answer the questions in mm -hmm. in nine or ten hours and not have to hold those the answers to those questions for three seasons because you kind of run out of steam and that, and that so we, we hope it's a satisfying ending and, and that it feels Stephen Kingian uh, in its way I thought season two of Suburgatory was great thank you um serial what's the like every episode kind of stands alone right. of that show but thanks i like that show too yeah i miss it me too